And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One thing that people like about the game Carcassonne is they like the way it looks when it's finished. You have all these tiles and you're placing them out building cities and pastures and castles and things and it just looks really cool. Well, that's the same thing that attracted me to this game, Castles of Callendale, because in this game, you are taking all sorts of things and building a fascinating castle with fireworks, and it's made out of trees, and the end product of this game looks really neat. But is it fun? Let's take a look. Each player is going to start with one castle type, so you're either going to have stone, or you're going to have trees, or you're going to have tutor background, and so a player is going to get one of these randomly. If you play with four players, then each person is going to have one that's made up of two different types. And so whatever you get, you're going to put it in front of you. You have a base here, and your, your main castle piece is going to sit on that base. And then the gameplay itself is really simple. You're going to have here in, front, in, in the middle of the table a pile of tiles here. And these tiles are going to be all different things. They're going to be drawn from a pile here. If you'll notice that in this pile of tiles, you'll notice that some of the X's are a different color than others. That's in case you're playing with less than four players, you can pull some out. But on your turn, you can take one of these tiles, or you can draw the top tile from a deck. After you take a tile, you can instantly say, I'm just going to keep it here and score for points. It's going to be worth one point at the end of the game. It's probably not worth it, because if it's in your castle, it's worth two points. But near the end of the game, you might do it because you might get a piece that doesn't fit. Once you take a piece, you can add it to your castle. But here's the thing. You can rearrange this anytime you want. So I might get this piece later on and put this one here. And then get this piece and oh, that piece. Yeah, that goes there. You have to make sure that all the sides matches. But wait, tree doesn't match castle, so that doesn't go there. Hmm, okay, I'll put it like this. And you can rearrange the different tiles and put them any way you want. And as you build, you can do all sorts of things, but there's some rules about building. This sky area can't touch the base. However, I might be able to pull this off here, okay? Now it's coming up a little bit like this, but there's a few other rules that you, you can't build like a bridge off of different ends. Like for example, this here is a bridge. I can, I can put this like this, and I could even have it so that if there was a castle, I could build this as a bridge, but I can't do something like this. We're just sticking it off the end and, ca and capping it. Um, you can't do that. You can't have like this weird thing hanging off. Basically, the rules were a little bit more. I was went through them like, man, this is kind of too many rules to explain. Just don't build illogical buildings is basically how it works. You have these end caps. And like I said, anything can be put in any direction unless there's a flag on it. If there's a flag on it, it can only go this direction. This is a roof. So the flag is going to be worth an extra point at the end. So I'd have to find some spot to put a flag. Maybe I'd build it like this and put that flag there. And again, as you take tiles, you can mix things up and put them. And you just have to follow the basic rules, which is sides must match. You can't put pieces that are past the base. So you, this is a base here. The next piece has to have sky or something. It has to go up. And so players can be making all sorts of weird configurations. Every single tile is, has different artwork on it. So you're going to have really fun castles that you're putting together. Each player also has a wild tile, which is worth minus one point if you use it, but it can close off and end. See the scoring in this game, which by the end of the game, you can flip this board and keep track of the scoring here. But every uh, tile that you have in your castle is worth two points, except your wild tile. Then if all your castle is completed, there is no empty spots in it, like there's no spot here with nothing attached to it. You just see sky around the outside of it. You get a bonus two points. And you get an extra point for every flag that you have in your castle. You get an extra point for every tile that you stuck aside during the course of the game. Uh, but every exposed one that you don't have covered up, you lose two points for. So better to stick one of these wild tiles in so that you don't, you only lose one point for using this. And you might even get those bonus two points for having the whole castle completed. And that's pretty much it. There's also a speed variant of this where each person will have their own pile of tiles and you'll do things as quickly as you can. 
Uh, but uh, either way you play this, you, I mean, there was also, I guess, there's a variant where you can, hey, kids, here's some tiles, build a fun castle. Either way, that's how you play. Now, on a somewhat negative side of this game, first of all, I want to say I love this game. All right, I really like it. But there's a few minor negative things. First of all is production. This box here is not a very sturdy box. And then the tiles themselves are decent tiles, but they're not as high quality as some of the other stuff that I've seen come from Renegade. So I'm not sure if they were going for maybe a low price point so that this game can get out there and be played. I don't know. Now the artwork on the other hand is great. I love the fact that every tile looks different. And when you're done building a castle, that's just cool. And in fact, the fact that they say, hey, just go ahead and play and make your own castle. Kids are really going to enjoy that. They're really going to like sitting here making castles. And in fact, at the end of the game, that's kind of like you're looking at like, yeah, I did that. I like the game also because this game has an unusual thing where you can basically rearrange your castle whenever you want. That's neat. Um, except one small caveat. When you get to the end, we kind of put a limit on it. All right, you have one minute on the last turn. And the reason you do that is because people will sit there and go, okay, I need to maximize this and figure out the exact possible way, best way to do it. All right, just do it already. Um, but it, it, most of the time as you build your castle, it's going to stay the same. And then you'll get a new tile and be like, hang on, let me move these things around. And so you can be playing even on other players' turns, although turns tend to go pretty quickly. You look, do I want one of those tiles or am I going to take a random one? Do I get this tile? The biggest decision that will slow you down will be, do I want to add this to my castle? I can probably fit it in somewhere. Or do I want to put it face down? Once you put it face down, it's face down forever. And once you keep in your castle, you're stuck with it. You can't switch between those two over the course of the game. Using the wild tile is cool. You know, that it's that there to kind of for those completionists who want to finish their castle. And you'll find out that in many games, point scores aren't that far apart because, you know, there's everyone's getting the same amount of tiles. And so every time you put a tile face down, it's almost like you're losing a point, but maybe you're gaining a point if you don't have that open-ended thing. The speed variant of the game is okay. It will help people if you're like, oh, this game, that person's taking too long on their turns. We'll play the speed variant. But for me, this was kind of just like a relaxing game. I'm actually hanging on to this game because I just like the whole idea of building up a castle, working together, seeing things grow, but doing so kind of peacefully. I'm going to take this tile, so get my castle somewhere. I'm going to do this. And the three different types, it gives you that Carcassonne feel without being really that mean. There's little, like nothing really interaction with other players other than maybe taking a tile they want and you could even like play it solitary in a sense to see how many points you get drawing tiles and building your castle it's hard to explain it's not like this game is a great game the game itself is decent but the experience is fun the visual effect of seeing your castle built is excellent so even though the component is a little bit less than i like the artwork makes up for that and I just have fun seeing my castle when I'm done. So check this one out. That's Castles of Callendale. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent, into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.